And for more of what's happening on the ground here in Baghdad, I'm joined by Matt Bradley of the Wall Street Journal and Alyssa Johansson Rubin of the New York Times, both seasoned correspondents in this region, and you have been covering this story all week. I want to start with you, Matt. You were with those Shiite militias yesterday in Sadr City. A wild scene, some mock suicide bombers calling themselves the Peace Brigade. What did you see and what does it mean? Uh, well, it was, a, it was a scary sight in Sadr City, and it was repeated in cities throughout uh, South and West Iraq, where we saw just you know tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of mostly young men parading through the streets, uh, armed with sometimes fake weapons, sometimes riding on trucks that had fake anti-aircraft guns. And all of this was a bit of theater. It was aimed at intimidating and, um, and, and trying to, to send a message to the, the Sunni part of Iraq, that uh, they were that the the Shiites would not be yielding, especially Baghdad and the shrines in uh, in some of the major um, major pilgrimage cities of Iraq that ISIS has directly threatened, and um, you know this was this this move toward Shiite militias, toward civilian engagement, is really quite threatening because what it says is that we're headed back towards the kind of uh, of sectarian conflict that really almost tore the country apart in 2006 and 2007. And, and Alyssa, you have been with the Sunnis this week, and they, they have to feel threatened, the minority. I, I think they feel particularly threatened in Baghdad. There are fewer Sunnis here than there were in 2005, 2006, 2007, because of the civil, the civil strife during that time. And uh, so now their communities are a little more isolated, um, and the people in them feel that the, the, the rising of these militias is, is a very dangerous uh, moment for them. How, how did this happen so quickly? I think the rest of the world wasn't really paying attention to Iraq, and suddenly ISIS, this group probably people hadn't paid much attention to either, is sweeping through Iraq. Well, U.S. policymakers and the Iraqi government were, were very well aware of the growing power of ISIS. And we saw areas in, especially Mosul, where all of this started off, they, uh, ISIS and some of their, uh, their Al-Qaeda-inspired partners were shaking down local businesses, they were intimidating tribal leaders, and they were starting to exercise the kind of troubling influence that they did during the height of the sectarian civil conflict in Iraq back in 2006 and 2007. And also there were signs that the military just wasn't up to snuff. Alyssa, I want, I want your thoughts on what happens now. Everyone's on edge. It seems the threat to Baghdad has receded, but quickly just what do you think happens now? Well, I think clearly there will be an effort to, to somehow strengthen the army, and that will come from many sources. I think, you know, we know that the Iranians are here, Iranian advisors are trying to work with the Iraqi army and improve them, but they're also working very much with the militias. They've, they've trained some of the militias to a fairly high level. Uh, and the Americans are sending in advisors. I, I think the question is, is that, is it, is it too late for a really significant military uh, solution? The larger question is, to, to what extent will Iraq's uh, de facto borders, or the, the, the borders of the central government, be redefined by what ISIS has done in these last few months? Thanks for joining us today, and thanks for all of your great reporting.